Shall we? Shall we, Faja? His further? His further? No, Greg. His Faja. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> right. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Craft Beer Republic. I am Greg. Thanks for drinking. Thanks for joining. Over there is everyone's favorite Midwestern Faja. That's Flexi. This farter. Are you saying Faja? I'm saying Far- farter. Oh, farter. Is no, Dr. Evil. It's farter. Faja. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> Totally relevant to the show. Yeah, we're uh, just reminiscing about some Austin Powers off air. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, welcome in. Like I said, we got a lot to get to tonight. I'm going to start things off with our top listening city of last week. Shout out to Louisville, Kentucky. I didn't see that coming. Wow, that's strange. Yeah, although we never bash Kentucky, we just bash Alabama. So that's true. I mean, there's still time. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, there's still time to bash Kentucky though, if you'd like to. Yeah. Well, maybe we're going to get more listeners. Maybe so. Tune so in next week. <laughs> Where everyone is their Faja and their grandfather. Um, <laughs> well played. Get one in there. Uh, so thank you to Louisville for listening to the show. Uh, find us, Craft Beer Republic, and at Craft Beer Republic. Find Flex on the grams at Flex Me a Beer underscores in between. And, uh, you know, I'm on that. I forgot to say this last week, but we're on that thread thing now, too, if you guys are threading. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do on there. Like, I, I've come up with a couple of funny quips, if you will. At least, you know, I thought they were funny-ish. And it's just, it's just text. I mean, you can attach a picture. It's weird. Like, I can't use emojis or, like, memes. I have to, like, go find them from Google in order to use them. I can't oh, just... weird. Yeah, and I I'm basically only speaking memes, so it was, it's a lot of added effort. We don't, don't like that. no too much of, but uh, yeah, it's fun. Get get kind of punny on there, and I've interacted with some breweries and some beer people, and so anyways, sky's the limit. Yeah, we're we're on threads for now. <laughs> well, it's cool. Yeah, well, it's trendy. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, Elon Musk, new, or not Elon Musk, uh, what's his name? Zuckerberg, new product, must have. So, you know, here we are. Whatever. Gosh, Let's talk about so more meta. I'm so, <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right, before we get to the show, let's get to the most important question, because it's a fancy answer. In a world where craft beer is king where muscles are bigger than growlers. <laughs> Only one tongue can guide us. <laughs> one man. One tongue. One tongue jobber. In this world, we must find out... Is flex drinking? Okay, so a little bit out of the uh, realm of normal beers for flex, as I speak mm. from the third person. Uh, a strawberry Berliner. Oh, by Eagle Park Brewing. That that's not out of the the normal. That part I, tracks. No, no, I always drink them. Um, but this beer, it is a Berliner style vice. Aged for 12 months in a oak further then further. <laughs> oak fooder, then refermented on strawberry and rhubarb. So this was something that they started doing, I think it was late last year. Mm. Um, they started aging some sours, and they, they come around a real nice, like, 3.3%, so it's almost wine cooler-esque. But it's like a, a real nice, Bartles and James, real nice sipper. You know, it's not like you're aiming to get completely hammered. It's like, hey, let's just sit and have enjoy a nice beer. Nice. So I do appreciate that. 
um untapped is not kind to this one and I, and I think it's because uh people just don't understand like the oak fooder and the, the aging so when they see like a strawberry sour or a strawberry burliner they're like oh hey 450 categorizes theirs as burliner vices so that's what it is wrong you're hmm. an idiot um <laughs> So I, I think that's what it is, because this one has a 366, which isn't horrible, but uh, still not not around what they do. So uh, we'll we'll get into the beer. It is, um, it's almost like champagne looking, yeah. right? That color. Yeah, like see-through-ish, but not totally clear. Yeah. And, and if, like, in person, it has, like, the tiniest hint of, like, pinkish hue to it. Um, very little head retention. It, it definitely smells like a, like a funky sour. Mm -hmm. um touch of oak on the nose no remnants of the strawberry nor the rhubarb interesting so we will uh we'll we'll dive in (laughs) oh there it is (laughs) just gotta do it for you man uh all right here we go and the millions and millions um so this is super carbonated oh i was gonna expect the opposite no it's like uh very effervescent Maybe that's different than carbonated, but is it, bubbly? It's, it seems quite a bit bubbly, but like mm. tiny bubbles, not big bubbles. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, sounds like champagne, champagne bubbles. That's kind of what it's like. Not an overabundance of that oak presence. Like it's just enough that you know, like, hey, this was like kind of an aged funky beer and they did some stuff with it. Tiny hint sweetness from the the strawberry, but. All in all, this is like a classic Berliner, 3%. Like, I think the the classification for Berliner is like 3% and under. I don't think there's like a legal classification. Or was that the Goza? Uh, It was one of those that's like 3% and under. But anyway, this really is a nice beer. Um, If you ever find anything aged in oak fooders, don't don't be afraid of it. No, usually it's really good. Exactly. You know? Like I always get, I used to be fearful of sours aged in oak because I was always wondering what that would come out to be. You get a lot on the nose. It doesn't really follow through yeah. too much and uh, it's just really enjoyable. I, I think the most sour beer I've ever had in my life came out of a furner. It was, uh, who was that? Puckery. It was good. This is quite puckery, but it's not, uh, it like stops before it gets too puckery. Okay. You know, so like the opposite of a warhead. Right. You know, it was like if a warhead would have stopped at that point, I don't know if I would have bought as many, but it would have been more enjoyable. Yeah, we we bought it for the torture. Correct. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. Or masochist. What was your favorite flavor? Um, probably the blue one. Okay. The blue one was really good. I liked the watermelon. green apple was good too. Which one? Watermelon? Watermelon was good. I mean, black was black cherry was underrated. Yeah. So I have to ask you the question I know everyone listening is is wondering. Is it Berliner or Berliner? You said uh, both. I did say both. You're right. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you started I'm, off with Berliner and I was like, fuck, have I been saying it wrong this whole I'm time? I'm confused. No, I, I think it is Berliner. Berliner um, Weiss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cierto pump. You up. You up. Um, yeah, I think it's Berliner. I don't know why I said Berliner. I'm. Oh, okay. so I I only figure it's idiot. Berliner because of you know the city of Berlin and Berliner vice, but I don't know. I thought maybe you knew something. I didn't, and then you went back to Berliner, and I was like, oh, okay, we're back to Berliner. I don't know. I think phonetically, like in the English language, if you look at it, it's Berliner. Yeah, I could see that. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I guess in your mindset, Berlin, Berliner. Berlin, yeah. But somebody then, uh, yeah, with, I, I, with I more smarticles, let us know. My vote's going to go Berliner. I don't know why I said yeah, Berliner. Yeah, Berliner for me. So Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, it's Furder. <laughs> How you say it? <laughs> Fur- Furder. Furder. <laughs> uh, right. Can we all just right. do an entire episode just speaking in Furder? <laughs> yeah, we should. We should have an episode where we all only drink beers that were made in Furder. <laughs> so we all have to say it as many times as possible. I'm down. I wish I had one. Um. All right. I, I have another. <laughs> Let's to get to, I wanted to bring, this is not beer related, but it's podcast related. And I get like some different emails and like newsletters and stuff from like podcasting world. Cause you know, the podcast, I thought this one was really funny. I wanted to bring it up. Apparently emojis 
in chapter titles, you can do chapters within a podcast, which I, I do. If you if you have an Apple CarPlay system and you're listening to the, the podcast, you should see the chapter titles. And they usually like plant little Easter eggs, like little funny things in there too sometimes. You're so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sure last week, I haven't edited it yet, but I'm sure there were multiple piss butt man chapters. <laughs> <laughs> no way there wasn't. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, apparently he does whatever a piss butt <laughs> can. It's obvious. <laughs> apparently, uh, those people that are putting emojis in their chapter titles and show titles are causing uh, some of the car plays to crash. What? Apparently, like the cars, like so. This started when someone with a 2014 realized their system kept crashing. And it's because the emoji that was being used was newer than the car, so it didn't have like an updated keyboard. And so uh, they put like whatever emoji in the chapter title and it crashed their stereo. They had to like restart it. Wow. Yeah. So it makes me want to put like nothing but emojis in the show title this week. Just see what happens. Just to fuck with people. Just who's got a 2014 out there? (laughs) (laughs) I have a 2013. Don't do it. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Experiment time. (laughs) That sounds like fun. Let's see what happens. Um, but yeah, so that's all. What an Nerd. interesting tidbit. Yeah. Nerd, nerdy podcast shit. So uh, like, there you go. If you don't have an emoji, like when somebody texts you, it just comes in as like uh, like symbols, right? Like an empty square or something. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. A square. So you, you would think that would just do it in the car. I would have thought, I mean, I don't know what's new since 2014, like what's changed, but like I always love it because we've discussed this before. My Siri is australian so it'll be like you know message from shannon let's get beer beer emoji beer emoji squiggly face emoji you know and she reads it out to you in your car it's it's always good that is pretty good yeah so anyways whatever we'll do a a chapter full of emojis and let us know if your shit crashes (laughs) well just broke your stereo don't stop listening yeah (laughs) also don't stop believing uh flex do any uh (laughs) <laughs> do any good research these days out in the Milwaukee uh, region? We went, uh, so technically not in Milwaukee, but uh, a little west of us. I hit up a brewery for the first time. I've had their beer before, but uh, you know when you're sitting at home with the wife and you guys can't figure out where to eat? Yeah. Right? Every That's night. like every night. And What do you want for dinner? I don't know. Uh, what do you want for dinner? And then you think of something and she goes, mm, no. That's like the only thing I don't want right now. Yeah, and then like you, you come up with like three more places, and then yeah. there's like a twenty minute pause, and then she goes, "You haven't even come up with anything." <laughs> and then by the time you finally decide on something, you've had like three granola bars, and you're not hungry anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. terrible. So anyway, um, I try to make you know my personal life not always about beer, right? Not always about myself. I I always want to go drink beer. I always want to go try new beers. But with my wife and my kids, I, I really do try not to make it about me. A nice guy. So the other night, we're sitting around and on the patio. And my wife's trying to figure out where to go to dinner. And classic dinner conversation. We can't figure anything out. Mm-hmm. So I said, hey, I know you don't really like beer, but this brewery is supposed to have some pretty good food. So she looks up the menu and she starts you looking asshole, at all another these- brewery. She starts looking at all these pictures of the food, and she's like, wow, that actually does look good. She goes, okay, let's go. So I was psyched. So we drove out to Raised wow. Grain, which is in Waukesha, uh, Wisconsin, which means nothing to you or anybody in California. Other than it's a funny name. Or anybody in Louisville, Kentucky, who's listening right now. <laughs> uh, all three of you. But they actually have a really cool logo. It's like uh, just the name like Raised Grain or RG and like a buzzsaw. Oh. It, it's pretty neat. So their their beer is it's solid. I would say it's above average. Okay. Their hazies aren't very hazy, but they oh, taste good. But they taste good. So they should be called juicy. So they should be called juicy. Um the mac and cheese pizza was really oh, solid. Have mac you ever and had mac pizza. and cheese pizza? I, I'm trying to think. You know, I think one time I had mac and cheese on a pizza, but it wasn't like solo mac and cheese pizza. Okay. It sounds like you were stoned. But uh um, yeah, I wasn't not. Mac and cheese pizza. Did I say mac and cheese pizza? Okay. Yes. That, that's like a pretty big thing around most pizza places in oh, Wisconsin. Okay. As long as it's like not a chain like Domino's or Pizza Hut. Sure. But most like local 
in-state places will do a mac and cheese pizza and it'll fucking rock your world so theirs was good um the kids food was good and i had this fruit punch sour that was like absolute what i thought top notch it reminded me of now this is a big name here drecker oh and drecker used to come out with their brain squeeze sours Mm -hmm. not their brains to where it was like the more traditional you know berliner soury right um, you get a hint of the fruit but enjoy the sour of the beer and that's what this beer really reminded me of Mm. and uh it was enough to make me like uh, i'm gonna go back nice so it was a solid place their facility is fucking enormous like absolutely enormous it's in this industrial park and i actually wasn't quite sure what if we were going into like the tap room area or what because there was like two separate buildings wow the tanks on the outside half of their parking lot in the summer turns into like the outdoor patio nice um tons of tables dog friendly the inside from when we went in for like the short bit because we sat outside you just you know, went inside, make sure, hey, do we just sit wherever we want? Turns out you right. did. Um, but just a really, really, really great facility. So good food. Great food, yeah. We're gonna go back, uh, try some more pizza, maybe a couple burgers or something like that. So nice. Yeah, can't wait to head back there, man. I like it. I I did some research, uh it wasn't new. I, I took my parents or I took my, my mom and my stepdad to uh Malibu Brewing for the first Ooh. time. It's funny, they're not beer drinkers. My mom is absolutely not a beer drinker. Um, Any beer, like, you put in her face, she makes, like, the (sighs) face, you know, when she tastes it. Um, And her excuse is, well, it tastes like beer. It tastes like beer. Yeah. And my stepdad, uh, he'll have, like, a Corona from time to time, which is like, oh, all the good shitty beer was out? You had to go with the shittiest of the shitty? Oh, yeah. They had a Bud Light or something. Yeah, like, like the man. second shittiest beer wasn't even yeah. in stock. Yeah. I know. No no champagne of beers. What happened? Come on. Um, so he goes, you know what? I'm going to get my first flight all proud. I was like, all right. I no like, kidding. Let's... First yeah, flight goes, ever. Yeah. So he goes, uh, which one should I get? Because they have a couple like predetermined or you can make your own. And so uh, we, we got him one and, you know, picked out the lighter beers, more closer to Corona, you know, type beers. And uh, he he actually really liked all of them. His favorite was their Canyon, which is like a rosé lager, which there's no grapes in it, thank God. Interesting. Um, is that just hi- the name for it or what? Well, it's pink. There's hibiscus and cranberry, uh, but it's very light. I'm not uh, going to lie. That sounds fucking amazing. Super refreshing. And not only did he love it, my mom was like, this is not disgusting, which is a huge step. So that was, that was good times. We going to have your mom on the show now? We should. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> We can talk about piss butt, man. <laughs> mom would love to talk about that. We'll just kick you out. Just be me and your mom the whole time. Uh, again? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to record that. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Ryan was there, co-owner, and so we talked to him for a little bit and, and let him know that my mom did not want to throw up after drinking his beer, so that was a huge compliment, of course. And It was a good time. Always always some good food and, and all that. Had, had some I was nachos. Say, you always talk about the food there. Dude, had nachos, uh, had... Oh, shishito pepper. We we get shishitos every time. Shishitos are delicious, by the way. And there's our like it has like a little slaw with like a little like uh aioli type dressing on it, like with the shishitos. And it comes with fry bread. Like you remember like Indian fry bread kind of thing? I don't know. Oh, it's it's fried puffy bread and you fucking jam it full of like the slaw. Ah God. Sounds delicious. So so good. So uh it was it was good times. But uh nothing new. I haven't been anywhere new in a while since I Shit on Wagon Wheel Brewing. That's like the last new brewery I went to, I think. Well, Need to sometimes do some research. it just rubs you the wrong way. And then yeah. you, ju- you just go to what you know for a while, and you're yeah. like, you know what? You just got to enjoy the good stuff, because yeah. you know it's going to be good. Well, it's a hot day. It's like, I need to cool off, so we'll go, you know, they're across the street from the beach, so, you know, it's not going to be hot out there, and good times. Nice. Half an hour drive. Temperature dropped 25 degrees. See, Same. that's funny. Half an hour drive to me is like... uh that's what the raised grain that we went to it was a 24 minute drive I'm like ugh, it's not 10 minutes <laughs> i know 10 minutes is preferred but every now and then you know, take a little trip out to the boo to to cool down and have some beers so. right on and then uh coley and big dick nick we went over to their house for a little pool party action he got a uh, like a pool basketball thing and so of course we turned into a drinking game 
and just got absolutely shittered. Just no, you guys getting shittered. Yeah, it was. <laughs> we were playing around the world, and if one person made it, the other person had a drink. And we both went through these like stages of just like sinking everything. It's like, oh, hold on, I can't keep up with the drinks. So good times. Goddamn athletes. <laughs> it's a hard life, man. Needed ice the knees afterwards. Let me tell you. So. In the pool. In, in the pool. And, and ice. And, can we get the ice out here, please? So good stuff. We had we were drinking some uh, big rock from Malibu in the pool. Mm mm mm. Amber Lager. Nice. Hey, Coming Ambers. The Ambers hit. Oh, so good. And not sticky. I think we should call the pen. I, I could use a drink. <laughs> he calls through the bullpen for beer. God damn, this is a long description. Uh, all right. I'm drinking Pure Project Brewing in collaboration with Harlan Brewing and North Park Beer Company. Back to the future one. And it's future with a pH. Six and a half Ooh. percent. Yeah. I, I don't I'm like not that. Gonna, yeah. I mean, uh, look at that sweet can art. Oh, I do like that, though. And and anything back to the future themed, you know, I'm going to get hard over. Six and a half percent. Four one five on untapped out of 715 ratings. Bear with me here. Prepare to journey through space and time with our latest creation, which marks the highly anticipated return of our future series with an electrifying new twist. Back to the Future One is an epic triple threat collaboration with local legends North Park Beer Company and Harlan Brewing Company. This murky IPA showcases Mega Motueka, an innovative blend of freestyle hops, Motueka hops, and Phantasm that creates a complex and unparalleled sensory experience. The addition of Nelson Savon... Savin? Savin. Savin? Savin. I don't know why I said it that way. That was Berliner. The addition of Nelson Savin and Citra hops... Contribute to the irresistible aromatic bouquet of passion fruit, kiwi, and lemon curd that lure you in. Followed by flavors of pineapple, coconut cream, and grapefruit that leave you wanting more. Whether you're sharing it with friends or savoring it solo, this crave-worthy brew will transport you to a different dimension with every sip. And look at the fucking haze on this bad boy. This yeah, is... those pure brews, they don't lie, man. No, they're murky AF. Um, on the schnoz, it's all citrus, like... Uh, some orange, a lot of like lighter citrus, like lime or lemon or something in there. Maybe some mango. Not quite sure, but smells delicious. Let me dig in, Daddy. First of all, so soft. They do such a wonderful job. Yeah, I think I'm picking out some of the smells now. Probably not so much citrus. Pineapple, a lot of pineapple coming in on that tongue. Maybe a little bit of like a coconutty type of flavor coming in. Yeah, okay. The coconut with, cream pie, they said. That, that's yeah, pretty solid. I like some that. some citrus finishing things off, like a little oranginess towards the end. This is uh, another killer one from Pure. And of course, North Park and Harlem. Uh, North Park, so good also. I've had a few North Park uh, collabs. I don't think I've ever had a North Park straight up. But um, yeah, I, I see everything that they do. And I, I feel like those two places, like North Park and Pure, are like top of the line yeah california breweries if not nationwide breweries and pro tip if you're at north park go get some of the food they have a little like food window in the back basically and they have pork nugs which just like fried pieces of pork belly with this delicious sauce on them super healthy and it's amazing <laughs> zero trans fat <laughs> not not a one not even a single trans fat <laughs> oh all right so good uh all right a little bit of news to get to stone has inked a licensing deal for specialty coffee products so what they're hmm. gonna come out with canned coffee now the exclusive deal gives new z new z I don't know, some coffee company. The rights to co-manufacture and distribute stone coffee products using top brands, Arrogant Bastard, Stone Boy Nevesa, Salt Lime and Lager, and Choco Vesa nationwide in the natural and traditional grocery stores and convenience stores, as well as office coffee and hotel brokers and distributors. Yeah, that's what I want when I want coffee. I want Stone Boy Nevesa, Salt and Lime. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Sounds awful. Choco Vesa? Absolutely makes sense. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously, Greg. Obviously obviously yeah but uh the rest of that i'm good i don't even want arrogant bastard when i'm thinking coffee that that mm, no the boy of azo was pretty good though wasn't too limey for you i i 
actually wished it was limier. Oh, okay. Then maybe you need the 805 Cerveza. I can't stand it, but it's like the same idea. It's 805 with lime added to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too much lime. Okay. In fact, I don't even think they use 805 in it. It doesn't taste like it. It tastes like a lager base, but I don't know anything. So whatever. Nerd. Yeah, I know. It just doesn't like 805 is a little thicker than the Cerveza is. Anyways. Uh, skincare experts advise against a new dangerous TikTok beer tanning, beer tanning trend. Beer tanning. After a recent TikTok beer tanning trend went viral, skincare experts at Skin Store sent out urgent messages that warning folks. That sounds really legit, by the way, Skin right? Store. Yeah. And come on over to Greg's store. Come on over to Skin Store. Yeah. Where we, you, you can buy skin at the Skin <laughs> Store. Just call one eight hundred wear skin store when you're looking for new skin, and we promise we're not fake, right? The yeah, okay, go on. Uh, they sent out an urgent message warning folks against using beer to become more tan while going outdoor for summer activities. Okay, question: <laughs> Does that mean lathering yourself up in beer and laying outside? I, I do. Or believe. does that mean drinking way too much fucking beer? passing out in, in the sun for eight hours no that's highly recommended okay that's what i thought because yeah. i've been doing the latter and i look great. yeah yeah yeah. no you're good you're good it's the first one you don't want to do <laughs> like, don't be stupid it's the first one you're wasting beer <laughs> yeah come on uh they go on those the though those experimenting with beer as a tanning method have claimed that the hops and yeast activate the melanin in the skin The truth is, yeast buildup can potentially cause rashes and burns. With the trend having gone viral, skin experts at Skin Store have said with urgency... You buy buy some skin at the Skin Store. (laughs) We're not fake. (laughs) Promise. (laughs) While some people believe in the benefits of hop and yeast to enrich the skin, pouring lager directly into the skin will lead to a buildup of yeast in certain areas and cause an infection. This could be anything from a red rash to large bumps, which could make which could be made much worse by the sticky smell of beer on your body, increasing the likelihood of being bitten and stung by bugs. So do they not think people are going to shower then too? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know, man. The whole thing, like, A, why are you doing it? B, this warning sounds a little extreme. Now this has been researched by the company, The Shower Store. They think that if you do this, you should shower more. (laughs) And if you're going to shower, make sure you wash it off with soap from the soap store. <laughs> a very real place to get soap. We promise it cleans your skin because it's soap at the soap store. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, these guys are geniuses. What a ridiculous cycle of brilliance. <laughs> or of something. Um, Mexican beer makers are using bugs to supplement barley in their productions. That's interesting. Uh huh. What's the science behind that? Uh, Mexican entrepreneurs are using crickets to supplement barley and beer. La Gria beer is being tested out in small batches in, uh oh, Quiritero. Got it. Sounds good to me. Yeah. By a local craft brewery and a company that makes gluten free and bread free products using insects. Oh, interesting. The creators wanted to prove that insects can become part of your diet, even in drinks, while maintaining taste. They found that pulverized crickets, when lightly toasted, have a very similar taste to barley and rye and began substituting them in the production of a malt porter beer. All right. Climate I'm gonna, change. I'm going to hit you with the big wow. <laughs> <laughs> Climate change has made barley less readily available because of drought and excessive heat, which impedes its growth. So, uh, you know, the insects are a lot easier to come by at that point. This leads me to my most important question related to the story. Would you? I'm wondering who can send me some bug beer now. You'd drink it. You wouldn't? I don't know. Would you eat crickets? Like, would you do like the cricket tacos that they do over there? Well, no, I couldn't do that because they're actually crickets. But if they ground them down and lightly toasted them. (laughs) 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 I would be a fool. You're the fool. I would be very interested in. Lightly toasted them. Dude, that was solid. Um, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, I I would try some cricket beer. <laughs> what if they lightly toast them and put them in tacos? Would you eat them? It's like a it's like the 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 the, the, the mental thing, right? Like you you right. see the cricket, right? And then you're eating it. I don't know. I could probably do it. I don't think I'm going to tell you. I'm going to enjoy it. Sure, 
But if I, you ground them down, lightly toasted them, <laughs> dumb. Uh, <laughs> I would probably drink the shit out of it. Wow. Okay. I mean, wow. So that that was a heavy wow. wow. Yeah. I mean, wow. here's wow. here's how you get me. You have me try it, ask me if it's good, and if I say it's good, you tell me. Oh, so you couldn't know. I, I don't think I could know. Really? Yeah, I'm not down with the bug eating thing. But you're not eating the bug. You're drinking it. Well, you're like drinking it filtered through stuff, so... <laughs> Hopefully they filter it. <laughs> it's a bit nutte. New hazy cricket beer. Oh. <laughs> if you're lucky, <laughs> you'll see some legs. Oh, God. Dry hopped with Jiminy. Yeah, hey, no that's yeah. a good name for a, a new hop. The Jiminy Oh, hop. Jiminy Hazy IPA. <laughs> <laughs> Double dry hopped with the Jiminy. Dry, oh. No, thanks. Yeah, I Give uh, me the cricket beer. All right. Hey, let us know on th- on threads. Let us yeah. <laughs> reach out to us on threads if you do that thing and tell us if you drink Jiminy Cricket beer. Uh, Funky Town Brewery has been named the winner of the 12th annual Sam Adams Brewing the American Dream Brewing and Business Experience Ship. Well, won't you take me to? <laughs> what? You have something <laughs> what, special to What do you mean, what? Yeah. What was F- that from? Funky Town Brewing? Oh, Got it. Come on. How old are you? Uh, Not old enough, apparently. Through the experience ship, the brewery has won unparalleled access to brewing and business resources from experts, including Boston beer founder Jim Koch. Koch? 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 Koch. Koch? Koch? Definitely Koch. (laughs) An invite to the Sam Adams Brewery to collaborate on a specialty beer, which will be served in their respective tap rooms in Boston, Chicago, and tickets to the Brewers Association Great American Beer Festival in Denver. That Flex needs to go to. Dear Mrs. Flex. I'm working on it. <laughs> Please excuse Mr. Flex. So anyways, good good job, Funky Town. That's a cool little uh, thing to win there. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Get some, uh, some uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word. No, nope, I don't know. About it. Okay, good story. <laughs> Gets her name out there, you know what I'm saying. There like, you go. Uh, what's, what's the word? You Exposure? Know what yeah, that's the word. A little exposure. That's why I keep you around. Yeah. I got, I got her in my keep somehow. Uh, the Brewers Association has released the 2022 rankings of the top 50 craft breweries by volume. Okay. So is that just like the largest craft breweries? You know, like they're by their output volume, volume yeah. of beer. Yeah. It's like Sierra Nevada. Yeah. So here we go. Number 50. No, I'm just, we'll, we'll do the top 10. Uh, number 10. <laughs> Brooklyn Brewery. We all believed you, Greg. <laughs> I know. <laughs> number 100. Uh, number 10, Brooklyn Brewery. Number 9, Tilray Beer Brands. That's like the weed company that bought Green Flash and a couple other breweries. Oh, weird. Yeah. Number 8, Canarchy. With number 7, Stone Brewing. Clearly these aren't craft. Number 6, Artisanal Brewing Ventures out of Pennsylvania. Number 5, Gambrinus. Out of Texas? Never heard of that. Gambrinus? I've heard of I've never had anything from them. Uh, number four, Duvel Mortgat, which is really Firestone and the other brands. <laughs> I, I read a thing recently that like Duvel's collective output between, because it's Firestone, uh, Boulevard, and Cigar City are all under the Duvel name, I think I got I did that not right. know this. And out of the three of them, I think collectively they put out somewhere around like 550,000 barrels of beer last year. Wow. But uh, of that 550-ish, whatever the real number was, I think Firestone was like 420. Like they far and away blew out the other two brands. Wow. Yeah, it was interesting. Sorry, nerd shit. Uh, Number three, Sierra Nevada. Number two, Boston Beer Company. Number one, any guesses? Uh, By volume. By volume, not craft? Well, I mean- Like Budweiser is not on here, but correct. There's like fake craft on here. I don't know. The other thing I think was like uh, like Yingling or something. That's it. Hey, ding 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 ding. Yingling it is. I've I've been paying attention to beer. Look at you go, bud. I'm almost a pro. All right, we'll end it with this one. Drunk Delaware man bites police dog multiple times, attempting to evade cops. Bites a Ju- pol- bites a police dog. Yeah, and it, what a turn oh. of events, right? To- <laughs> That's the face. The face is great. Jamal Wing, 47, allegedly 
forcibly resisted arrest after state police pulled him over in Wilmington parking lot at 1.41 a.m. for speeding on a highway. State police said in a statement, Wing, what a great last name, Wing exited his Toyota Camry, big ballin, without being told and refused commands from troopers to return to his vehicle. The troopers and a canine then attempted to detain Wing, who bit the dog in his efforts to evade arrest. Wing continued to resist and bit the canine multiple times. Troopers were eventually able to apprehend Wing, and they reported smelling alcohol in his breath and observed signs of impairment. Wing suffered multiple injuries in the incident, including a gash above his left eye, was transported to a hospital for treatment, but once he arrived at the hospital, he continued attempting to escape and assault a trooper, which injured the trooper and damaged police property. The trooper and the canine were injured by Wing and required medical evaluation. Upon his release from the hospital, he was charged with a number of crimes, including two counts of assaulting a police officer, one count of assaulting a law enforcement animal, driving under the influence, two counts of resisting with force or violence, criminal mischief, I mean, that was a real charge, disorderly conduct, failure to have required insurance, speeding in excess of posted limits, and duty to sign and carry license. He's being held at the Howard R. Young Correctional Institute on $34,200 bond. Wow. Very specific. That's a good amount. Do you think somebody called and they were like, hey, I want to bail him out? And they said, how much money you got? And they said, I got $34,100. And they said, whoops, his bail is 34200 like, Bad news, bud. <laughs> not getting out tonight. So stupid. <laughs> so dumb. It's the first yeah. thing that crossed my mind. Yeah, Second what a fucking was, number. How do you bite a police dog? How did that dog not just take off his arm or something? Well, that's like, what I'm thinking. Crazy. Like, they're supposed to be like professionally aggressive, right? Right. It, it's like what they're trained to do. Correct. So how do you get a hold of a police dog? Like, I I need to see a picture of this police dog. Uh, yeah. Is this, I, is this like a chihuahua? <laughs> you know? It's, like, it's Marty the brew pup. Right? Cops yeah. are rolling up with Marty. And Marty's yeah. like sniffing around like, hey, what's up, dude? Everybody's like, hey, you want to pat me? He's like, arr, arr, arr. yeah, this guy's like, I took bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the dog didn't like bite his face off in the process. Yeah, it's super bizarre. Yeah, I think proper punishment would just be allowing the dog to go bite him back. Right? Yeah. But like multiple times, like as many times as he bit the dog. Oh, yeah, just just five minutes for the dog. That's all. Things will fuck you up. Yeah, but it was, it's like, was it a long hair? Was it a short hair? <laughs> Does this guy have hair all up in his mouth? That's he, pretty he gross. That would be gross. Like, you're, if it's a German Shepherd, you're just getting ew, tufts dude. of hair. Fucking ew. Yeah, that would be gross. Like, you're going to be shitting that shit out for weeks. <laughs> shitting out German <laughs> Shepherd hair? <laughs> Bro, yeah. did you eat a blanket? <laughs> no, I bit a dog multiple times because yeah. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and it how, didn't even work. How do you respond to that? That's ridiculous. How do you? Re- yeah, that is absolutely ridiculous well i hope they let the dog bite him back just for you know fairness sake or whatever record it i'd watch that i would yeah fuck that guy uh all right let's wrap things up let's hit a little music let's say hi to vanessa hi vanessa hi uh you can find us on the socials at flex me beer underscores in between of course at craft beer republic craft beer republic dot com 805-538 beer 2337 and uh oh mail at craft and uh Hope everyone had fun at Emo Fest last week. Good times. I believe that's everything. I hope everyone's staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>